And in this screencast, we're going to be doing Lesson 2 assemblies of the tutorial. So I've already uh, breezed through the first steps, which are very similar to Lesson 1. So I'm assuming you can do these. Um, I'm going to stop when we get to this one, creating the lip on the part. This has a few new commands. So this uses, uh, well, it starts out with the extruded cut. And let's see, they ask us to select the front face. And then we're going to uh, do an extruded cut on that face. Okay. And here it asks us to do a new command, uh, which is convert entities. That's right here. Since this face is already selected, it's going to, it says, um, uh, convert the model features. So this is a three-dimensional model. It's going to take some of those features that intersect this face and turn them into sketch features. Okay, so we click that. And you can see the new black things that appeared there. So those are now in the sketch. And then it says click the front face again. And to click offset entities right here. And that is next to it. So that takes um, the outer one of those features and it moves it uh, and you can see an offset direction. So it's still within the plane of the sketch, but it's moved it, uh, in this case, two millimeters because that's the last one that I uh, used. Just pressed F there to get back into the view. So um, then, so set that distance to two. And in this case, we need to reverse it because we want to offset this way so that we can do a little uh, cutout for the other part to fit into. Okay, so now we're ready to click check. And I have to exit sketch to complete the um, cut feature. Now you can see what it's going to cut. Uh, direction 20, that's because I already did it before. Uh, you'll probably have to enter 20. And you might need to select, ch click flip side to cut. And so that little um, checkbox is here. You can see uh, here it's cutting the outside, there it's cutting the inside. The yellow is the portion that is cut. And we want to cut the outside like that picture. Okay. And that's it for the part. Okay. Now they ask us to change the color. So this is um, going to the icon and the design tree. So we go all the way to the top, right click that, go to appearances, which is right here, and then down click that and select the tutor two. That's the part that I've already named here. And just click, um, looks like a blue. Uh, any color you want, though, is fine with me. And click a check. And we're ready to save the part again. Okay, so we've made that part. I also have open um, Tutor 1. Now, if you don't uh, have that part anymore, that's okay, because you can find that part in the sample tutorials, which is part of the SolidWorks installation. So uh, I have it from before, uh, and it's open. If you do, uh, can't find yours, then go there and open one so you have both of the parts. And now we're ready to make the assembly. So that's right here. Click New. And we're doing an assembly now. OK. So you can see two documents are open here. These are the two components. Uh, this is the first one they want us to put in. And they suggest clicking Keep Visible in the Property Manager. And that'll keep this open after we're done with the first part. So I'm clicking that little pin. And now um, this won't go away after Tutor 1 is inserted. You can put it anywhere you want, but the, the usual practice is just to hit the green check for the first part, because that'll put it at the origin of the assembly. Okay. Now you can see we're still open. Here's Tutor 2. So to do this one, just um, I'm not clicking. I'm just pulling the mouse uh, or moving the mouse into the graphics area. And here, there's Tutor 2. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to put it next to it 
like it shows there. Okay, and you see, um, as soon as I move away, it's thinking that I want to place another one of those two to two parts, and of course we don't. So don't click; just hit the green check to um, end that. All right, and we've got a little overlap, but that doesn't matter because we're just about to um, mate them. So I'm going to hit the F button to show uh, both parts together. And we're going to save this as Tutor. OK, and it says um, Rebuild and Save. That's uh, We do want to do that. OK, so I'll just call this Tutor. And you can see it has a new suffix, ASM, SLD, ASM. That's for assemblies, of course. Ready to mate the components. Okay, so this is our button. You'll use this a lot. Um, if you didn't hit that little pin, um, remember the the pin to keep this visible. Uh, you could always place more components using this button, and that's um, common in um, when you're placing components after you've done some work or something, and that'll bring that back up. Okay, so I'm just going to X out of that. So in, in edit, uh, in assemblies, the most common buttons you use are mate and insert components. All right, so we're clicking mate. And there's a lot of ways to mate these two things. So don't think that their method is the only way. Um, they start with uh, this top edge and mating it to that top edge. Uh, once again, the blue box is going to be filled up with things that you click. So when I click on this first edge, aha, so it found edge and it called that edge one, part of um, this part, tutor one. And then I click on this one. I might want to zoom in to make sure I get the right one. I don't want to get that one. Okay. And there's edge two, part of part tutor two. And now you have to remember to hit the green check because we're done with this mate. Um, uh, the coincident is correct, meaning those are line on line, um, and you don't have to worry about the others for coincident. So we either hit that green check or that green check. Okay, and let's see, we're right around here. Now it, it notes that the position is not defined yet. It says it has some degrees of freedom. So this might be a funny term, degrees of freedom. It's not angular degrees. It's um, it means types of movement. So uh, it says that if we click on part tutor 2, I can now see those degrees of freedom by the way in which tutor 2 is able to move. So you can see that line is always fixed, but that's not enough to define its position. It can rotate about the line and it can translate along the line. So we need to be able to fix those degrees of freedom next. And that's what we're going to do with more mates. Okay. So it suggests uh, clicking that face and that face. And the default is always coincident right here. So it's now it's making those coplanar. And the only way those can be coplanar, coincident, is to line up like you see. But we're not quite done yet. There's still one more degree of freedom, the rotational one meaning this part can still rotate like that. Okay, and uh, let's see, repeat steps one and two, but select the top faces of both components. Okay, so if I click that one and that one, now we fixed it. And this one has to be in the position it is relative to that one. And then we're gonna green the green check. This green check, um, let's see, there's more than one here. That one completed the last mate and now you see there's one more this is to get out of the mate process and that's what this one is referring to here so once we're fully mated then um, we can click that one and we have our assembly okay so let's save that and now uh, it has a suggestion for how to learn to use some display controls so this is um, in the feature manager. So we're up here. So this is the design tree. Uh, this is the assembly. You notice that the parts that we mated uh, and inserted, there's the two parts, that one and that one. You see the little F. 
Uh, that does have a meaning. I believe that means that it's a... Mm, I forgot if that's fixed or free. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, I think it means it's the first part that's fixed. If you see a dash before the name of the part, that means there's still a degree of freedom left in it. Okay, so back to display. Uh, show display pane. Okay, that's this little guy. So I click that, and now you see new controls pop up here. And right click anywhere in the display pane and say add display state. Okay, so right click anywhere in there, add display state. And type a name. Okay, I'll just say sample state. Uh, and press enter. Okay. Uh, move the pointer over to the two, then uh, in the in the design tree, and then go to the uh, column there. So there's two to two, and now we want to go to this second column. And when the pointer changes to a finger, like you see, um, click on that and select hidden lines visible. Okay, and now we're going to hide that and um, we're going to right click on this and we can click there to go back to our normal state. So it's just a way of showing uh, another way to set up displays that you can access easily. Okay, and that completes this tutorial.